Hi, welcome to this week's edition of the Magnets. Mentoring on television, we call it, and you call it, lending a voice to business growth. What is our profession we're going to be focusing on today? Lately, there has been an upsurge of criminality, various crimes in the society. Today, we are going to be talking law. Criminal law, that is. And we have somebody who has served on this profession for decades. So on your behalf, we're going to be asking several questions here that we'll be proffering solutions to. But before then, who is our magnet for the week? The only way we get to know our magnet is to give you this profile, the citation, so that you get to know the quality of the personality we are featuring today. Join us on the other side for an interactive session. We'll be back shortly. Mr. Latif Olasen De Karim, an indigenous of Lagos State, he attained his first school living certificate at the Lagos Municipal Primary School, Lagos, between 1964 to 1970, where he passed with distinction. Between 1971 to 1975, he attended Ansarudin College in Solo, Lagos State, where he bagged his West African School Certificate, WASC, O-Level. Going forward in life, he also attended Lagos Baptist Academy, Obanikoro, Lagos State, between the years 1975 to 1977, where he was awarded his West African School Certificate, HSC A-Level. Then, he attended the University of Lagos, Akoka, Yaba, Lagos, where he studied law between 1977 to 1981, he was awarded LLB, Bachelor of Law. He went on to broaden his knowledge at the Nigeria Law School, Victoria Island, Lagos, between 1981 to 1982, where he was awarded BL, Barrister of Law. In 1983 to 1989, he served at Femi Okunu and Company as a legal practitioner in Chambers. In 1989 to 1992, he worked at Karim, Thompson and Ishola and Company, where he was a managing partner. He further worked as the principal partner at Olasa Inde Karim and Company during the period 1992 to 2003. Mr. Karim decided to go back to Femi Okono and Company to work as managing partner during the years 2003 to 17 to June 2020, June 2020 till date. Mr. Karim has been the principal partner of Olasa Inde Karim and Company. His major focus are advocacy, solicitorship, company secretary duties, probate matters, general office administration. He is the chairman of Slabs Nigeria Limited and has interest in several other ventures. He is a member of numerous clubs and societies, which includes Nigerian Bar Association, Isaleko Descendants Union, and many more. He was appointed as a member Lagos State Judicial Service Commission from November 2020 till date. He is the immediate past National Secretary of Ansari, the Society of Nigeria, during the period 2010 to 2019. He has also held other leadership positions. His hobbies are traveling and sporting activities. Welcome back to the Magnets. You've seen the caliber of our magnet for the week. And join me as we welcome we're actually in his chamber, Mr. Abdulatif Olasende Karim, the principal partner of Olasende Karim and Co. You are welcome to the Magnet, sir. Thank you. Madam. And thank you for having us, <laughs> even at a very I, tight schedule. Thank you for thank having you. me. <laughs> you heard the intro, sir. Do you agree with me there is an upsurge of criminality and various crimes in the society? Do you agree with oh, me yes. from your own practice? Oh, not even from my practice alone. From what we all can perceive and observe hmm. in the society generally. Hmm. From the north of Nigeria to the south, hmm. from the west to the east. There is ESN, there is Boko Haram, there, is, um, there are terrorists, um, Kidnapping. there are kidnappers, and uh, robbery, and robbery uh, arson. Everything is not is not being this bad. Okay. So there is a serious upsurge, okay. and the security uh, architecture obviously has it's not been able to cope. It's overwhelmed. Oh, completely overwhelmed. Right. The government, in my own opinion, is, is done a lot, is doing a lot, but we are not there yet. Okay. We are far, far from being there. Okay. I, I, as a as a lawyer who probably has also have the niche for this type of law practice. 
you want to tell us what exactly is criminal law? Because I can see that from your overview, you seem overwhelmed or your visit to the courts is more, you know, frequent now regarding this. Yes. Um, I would not say I have a niche for criminal law. If anything at all, my broader interests or interests are in other areas of the law. But in the last five years or so, or more, in the last seven years or so, I have been involved, uh, albeit reluctantly, I've been dragged into this aspect of the law by my brother and friend, uh, Mr. Dini Kazim, when he was the Attorney General for Lagos State. Okay. And the, the state at that point in time was overwhelmed by the criminality of defiling young girls. Ooh. There were several cases of defilement mm. and the ministry itself was overwhelmed. Mm. So he, he asked if I could help. Mm. It was pro bono, do not, did not it attract mm. a, a dime. Mm -hmm. And uh, had been, that's how I got into it. Mm. And I'd loved every minute of it because I I hated and I hate the idea of girls of three, four, five, mm. seven, ten, mm. fourteen being defiled by older men. So, you know, you get so worried that young girls who should um, be looking to a brighter future mm. are seriously uh, uh, emotionally Abuse. damaged emotionally damaged for life by this kind of hmm. interference in their lives. Okay, let's look at it generally now. Yes. Criminality. Yes. Can you capture what criminal law is for the purpose of the ordinary Nigeria to well, understand? My own understanding is that criminal law is a set of rules, you know, codified rules governed by the state, you know, for the punishment of offenders you know, for the punishment of offenders. So uh, that for me kind of captures what what criminal law is all about. Okay. And then okay. You, unless you want to go into who is an offender and the rest, but <laughs> if it's criminal law, that is what criminal law is all about. Uh, well, we'll take it for granted that everybody knows what criminal or crime is in the yes. society. Yes. But I hear people talking about law and code. Are there differences in this uh, nomenclature? Uh, yes. We were taught in the law school many years back that um, there, there is a criminal code in the north and there is criminal law in the south kind of thing. Um, and uh, that I want to believe what was responsible for that was because the north was largely uh, north. Sharia compliant. Sharia compliant, which does not apply, in, apply south. in the south. So outside of that, I could not see any serious Different because crime is crime anyway. Okay, does it mean that there are uh, this code and law? There are different applications. It, yes, in the areas that they apply, there are different applications. It, they, not just in nomenclature, because like I said, it's a question of um, and the 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 laws, the the punishment, right, and and the application. Okay, why I'm asking that. Is one more severe than the other? For instance, is the law more severe than the code that is for the North? From it, your own practice? It, it, it depends. Not from my practice, from the little knowledge General, that I yes. have. Yes, mm. I, I would want to believe that it depends on the crime. Okay. There are crimes in the North that in are capital. that are capital mm. that you may not find such uh, uh, punishment for. Punishment for in the south. Mm -hmm. I want. I want to believe so. Okay. But if you are talking about armed robbery, but like I said, now mm -hmm. most of these, most of these things are kind of um, have kind of merged mm -hmm. under the uh, Criminal Administration Justice mm -hmm. Act, okay. which each state had now um, adopted, adopted mm -hmm. into a Criminal Administration Law mm -hmm. of each state, okay. and they are they are they are like uniform across board. Across board. Okay, now, does it worry you, the upsurge of crimes in the society? I mean, worry you in terms of a practitioner? Mm. I know, I mean, like the doctors, we want people to fall sick to earn money. No. But uh, 
Is it something of a concern for you as a practitioner, as a legal luminary? It should be a serious concern for anybody because we are talking about sociology here. Mm -hmm. We are talking about sociology of crime and we all should be concerned. The upsurge in crime is alarming, hugely al alarming because now, unlike before, we have different kind of people from cultists with different names to arsonists, to uh, irredentists, to secessionists, you know, to this uh, question of Boko Haram and uh, Ansaru and all sorts. You know, it's, it, it's, it's crazy. And then we are, look, we are now, we are also being uh, inundated with serious crimes of kidnapping, kidnapping. All, all, all over the country. Mm. You cannot even go from Lagos to Ibadan without trepidation, mm. you know, even driving your own mm. car. Mm. You know, even, in, even on Lagos traffic, mm. somebody can just, you know, break your glass mm. with a small hammer mm. and demand for your phone, your laptop Gadgets. and what have you. Mm. So it is, it, it's, it's not been this bad before. Okay, you know, in your preamble, you talked, one of the crimes you talked about is arson. Yes. And, you know, which is also quite common. And we know that about more than shortly about a year ago or sometimes ago, we experienced that in your own Lagos that was more, mostly hit. We were talking about that. This is the magnet. And we are talking about the upsurge of crimes in the society with a special focus on criminal law. Let's go for a breather. Go for a short break. When we come back, the conversation continues. This is The Magnet. You're welcome back from that short break. And we're still talking about criminal law. I hope I'm asking all the questions you would have been here to ask our legal luminary, Mr. Abdulatif Olasendi. Karim is the principal partner of Alasa Indi Karim and Co. And welcome back to the program, sir. Thank you. Okay, you know, there is a pending question. Asin, sometimes ago we witnessed, I mean, an aftermath of the NSAS protests. Yes. A lot of destruction in what we would be called a mega city. It's, it's part of that, I mean, the entire federation, but I think Lagos was worse hit particularly judiciary. I know that a lot of courts and their materials, you know, gave way as a result of that. What's your take? As a Lagosian particularly, and a lawyer. Uh, the first question should be, would be or should be, what gave, no, what gave vent to NSAS in the first place? We are talking, and it's all about this criminal. Of course, criminality. Criminality. The, the Nigerian police force created the SARS Special Anti-Robbery uh, Squad that was tasked with um, dealing with armed robbers. You know, um, going after them, capturing them, interrogating them, and ensuring that they are prosecuted. Because after interrogation, the files are mm -hmm. sent to the Lagos Ministry of Justice in, this, in the case of Lagos State, and the Lagos State government, you know, prosecutes. But the you? vented anger uh, came out of the fact that a lot of parents and even a lot of these youth, youth who had been apprehended and uh, apprehended wrongly. Well, possibly. possibly wrongly and interrogated very vigorously, complained about the maltreatment of SARS, the squad, the, you know, all the kind of uh, um, interrogation techniques that were engaged or employed mm. by the police to extract information. To extract information from them, to extract statements, incriminating statements from them, which are called. Uh, confessional statements mm. and uh, and so at, in, in the process some of them died mm. right so it came to a point where the cry was that we don't want this that this court should be disbanded 
The squad was disbanded, but the protest took a life of its own. Hmm. In my own opinion, it went beyond NSATs, uh, talking about all that social ills. And in the process, Miss Clarence hijacked the, the, the beautiful uh, ideals behind the Thanks. protest itself. And, and what that gave birth to was what you saw in, in Lagos. Well, what, what, what is the effect of that now on the judicial practice in, in, in Lagos, for instance? It has very serious adverse effects because judges are unable, were for a long time unable to do their work. And uh, fortunately, we had these um, COVID-19 restrictions mm -hmm. then, so it was not seriously felt. Right. Yes, but since then, courtrooms have been made available to most judges, some are even sharing courtrooms before, mm -hmm. but courtrooms are now available. Some of these files, of, fortunately, were backed up by ICT and they're able to retrieve. But I believe that most of them we are not able to get these files in place. There were judgments that were written or in the process of being finalized that could not be retrieved. Okay. Some of the laptops of the personal laptops of these judges were destroyed. So they had nothing to fall back on, you know. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's monumental. Okay, so, you know, while we were conversing a while ago, one of the major, you know, crimes that has also become quite prevalent in the society now is the issue of jailbreak that also, you know, became quite common during the NSAS protests nationwide. We heard that of Edo and so many other states. And even in Lagos here. I mean, it used to be a no-go area in terms of criminal or crimes in the society. What is your take on this? Well, it again is a society thing. If you look, and part of the problem in my, in my own understanding, my little understanding of what is prevalent, right, is the exposure of our youth to all manner of television programs. You know, most of these crimes are even copied crimes. Mm, you want to experiment. Based on what they had seen on, in movies, on television, um, series, and what have you. The, we have seen a lot of jailbreaks in the US, in, the, in England, and wherever. And I believe some of them, some of these things, they just feel like, well, it's doable. It's doable here as well. And of course, now the security architecture is very porous, mm -hmm. unlike before. Why? Why? Because, I don't know, because maybe enough attention is not paid to, to these things. And two, maybe because of the prevalence of crimes, right? The MAPA is not there, the money is not there to provide the kind of security that is needed. And where they are even provided, they are corrupted. If you take that issue of uh, Kujé prison jailbreak, there was a, a battalion, I think a captain and 12 soldiers or whatever, you know, specifically tasked with providing security for that place. For whatever reason, they were absent. They were there and they moved away for whatever reason. So this is a kind of thing. Compromise. Compromise, of course. Wow. As, I suppose the military says they are still investigating it, but they already they had, they had come up with a damning um, statement. statement that they had no business not being there in the first place, and if they were there, they had no business not uh, intervening or not uh, um, attacking or preventing these guys from entering. In, entering the place. If there are soldiers there with arms and ammunition, and these guys are ragtag with motorbikes with motorbike and what, you are a trained outfit, trained soldiers, yet you disappeared without a fight. Mm. So something seriously was wrong. Okay. With respect to other jailbreaks, at times it has started with lack of food, lack of... Um, in the correctional centers. In the correctional centers. Lack of hospital facilities. 
so many things, and then one day it, it just erupts. There, there also, it is corruption on the part of the people charged with taking care of this okay. facility okay. and the inmates. Okay, sir, what is the effect of such jailbreak? Because when you see, or oh, you now witness criminals that are meant to be in the correctional center, so to say, are now wandering about in the streets. What safety does that pose? Well, well give to in, the, in, the in, in the first place, the question that, that I, I would want to pose is, what, what, in what condition are these facilities in the first place? They are, they are worse than hurts. If you, if you, I, I don't know if you've seen any of them before. <laughs> you know, they are not, they are not places want to keep human beings. They are, they are, not even they, animals. Uh, they are not places where you keep, regardless of the, the crime, crime, when you say you sentence somebody is for reformation. The, the punishment there is when, when they get there, they do minor, uh, you know, uh, menial jobs and what have you, just so that they know that uh, they are not part of society. There are some things that they cannot do. They cannot vote. They cannot go to school. Although they have some training yeah, inside, and yeah. but they are supposed to live like human beings. You know, the, the, the toilet facilities near yeah, zero. You put five. You put ten, fifteen people in a room that is meant for two people. No mattresses, and then and then there is hierarchy. Even in the in the in, in the, prison, in yes. prison <laughs> in, within the inmates, there is the boss that then it goes down the line like that. It's not done. Uh, well, you know. that's a conspiracy theory that uh, people like you will have to unravel for us to know the exact uh, position of everything. Mm. Okay, we're gradually coming to an end of the program now. But you see, I want to ask this. What does it for? I think I, I asked that at the beginning of the question. What does it mean to you? I mean, is it more money in your pocket when we have upsurge of crimes in the society? I'm talking of the lawyers now. You have more issues or more cases to take to court. Is it uh, more money to your bank account? How does it affect you? Well, I've said it earlier. I prosecute offenders, <laughs> defendants, as they are called in the criminal ad, uh, 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 administration of justice law for government. So, lawyers that defend criminals, quote and unquote, because at the end of the day, if the court says that uh, if man has not committed a crime, you cannot call him a criminal. Mm. That's why we call them defendants. Mm. Okay. Right. So, lawyers that, def that defend these guys, they do it for, yes, they do it for money. A fee. Yes, they do it for a fee. And it depends on your, your standing in society. Okay. Right. Like, so these government officials that were accused of stealing right. money and the rest of it, oh, you see a flock of lawyers yes. defending them. It's for a good, it's for a huge fee. And they do this and they make money. Whether it, com it uh, conforms with their conscience mm -hmm. or not, that's another, that's another story. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, everybody has to look at the cost of doing business. You mm. have to pay rent. If you have to pay rent, mm. you pay your you pay your juniors, you pay mm. your staff. Mm. You know, you you know, you make good. So it's um, I have no I have no issues with that. Okay. As long as they do it with with the fear of God mm. and the and the and with the integrity, right? Of the profession. Intact, you know. Because even I as a prosecutor, I, I do not go out of my way to uh, ensure a conviction. Mm. Th that is not the essence of okay. the practice. Mm. The essence of it is to present the, the evidence as you have it mm. and let the judge decide. Well, it's the magnets. Finally, final question. Well, give a counsel to your colleagues, to um, the citizens in the society, and even the judiciary. You ensure that you follow the rules. Either you are on the side of the prosecution or you are on the side of the defense. Thank you so much. We've been chatting with Mr. Abdulatif Olasende Karim, the principal partner of Olasende Karim and Co. 
Thank you very much for coming on the program. Thank you, Wanda. That has been the program today. The Magnets lending a voice to business growth and mentoring on television. I hope our guest has been able to mentor, I don't want to say baby lawyers, his junior he called them, particularly those who won't wish to focus on criminal law. We've been able to at least take a look, a cursory look of all the criminals or crimes in the society. Remember to follow us on our social media handles and then of course you will be watching a later version of this program on our YouTube channel. Do make it a date with us same time next week. And we shall bring another of such episodes of The Magnet. Until then, bye for now.